we're once again flying deeper into the black and as always I have absolutely no idea what I'm getting myself into. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. Game Glass allows you to take control of your ship from a tablet or a phone. But not only that, it can also give you on-screen information about systems, targets and the market around you. So gone are the days where you have no room for all your key bindings or you have to alt-tap out of the game just to look up market data. Follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free. If you like it and want more shards or features, you can either buy them individually or subscribe to Glass Pass. Use offer code DTA and get 5% on any purchase. Oh, whoa, that's pretty. Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Without Earth Astronomy. So, as always, we're out exploring, and as always, I have no idea what I'm getting myself into here. I have not looked up these systems. These systems were suggested by you doing a exploration live stream, and I have not looked up any information about the system, so I'm basically just taking you along for the ride as we explore the system. Beautiful neutron star here right in front of us. Let's see what else we have in system, other than it, of course, being a, a pretty neutron star. I'm just going to point myself away from it so we don't end up flying into it. And we're going to honk the system, and then we're going to give it a good old scan. Okay, that should be the last planet in the system. Everything is now fully scanned. Let's take a look at this. Oh, okay. Okay, so it looks like we not only have one neutron star, but we have a second set of a neutron star orbiting another star. Now that is quite interesting. Um, other than that, we have some, I noticed this gas giant when I was scanning looked like it had some pretty massive rings. So it might be worth actually going out, taking a look at that. Here we are. This is always a nice find when you find a, uh, I know it's not really a star, it's a brown dwarf that's close, but... Any star-like object with rings around it, like having a proper main sequence star with ring around it is really, really rare. They do exist in the game, and I have seen them. It is quite an amazing sight to see. These, of course, well, they're still pretty big, as you can see here. We are still three light seconds out. But yeah, look at that. They're massive. <laughs> this could be a pretty look. Let's just go over to the other planet and let's take a look at it from over there while we take some... Uh, so we get out and get some pretty shots of this as we fly away. Ooh, look at this. This is interesting. Very distinct rings on this planet. Uh, high metal content world here. With some very, very significant bands in the rings. That looks amazing. Wow. <laughs> interesting act. That's really odd that we have so distinct rings that actually puzzles me a little bit or maybe not actually you see normally rings around planets are formed by by the moons um if you know what a 4 year transformation is rings is essentially a real world 4 year transformation of the orbit times of the moon so you can imagine if you have a planet let's take jupiter as an example and they have moons and one moon will then pull, if you just imagine one moon, they would pull in the rocks and they would try to pull the um, the rocks into orbits where their orbit times is an equal, is a natural multiplier of their own orbit. So if this one orbits, let's say that takes one time unit, then they would try to pull the asteroids into rings where they have an orbit time of two time units or three time units or four time units, something like that. So seeing these distinct rings maybe actually makes sense, given that this only orbits one other major body and doesn't have any natural moons on its own. So I guess, kind of. Now I wonder, I mean, can I go in... Are these just very, very thin rings, or are there an actual, like, space in between the rings here? So could I go in between them here? Or will I drop out? Nope. I can go straight through. That's actually pretty neat. <laughs> okay, let's try the other ones in here. See if I can also go through there. So we have a space kind of here. Yep. And up again. <laughs> Okay, just to confirm that these rings are in fact working, let's try to uh, to drop into... Uh, 
You know what? I'm actually going to try to drop into the outer part of the ring. That should actually be like, instead of finding the most efficient mining spot in the league, we should look for like the prettiest. Because just look at this. <laughs> Damn, that's beautiful. I don't think I have any mining gear on this thing at all. I'm just going to take a quick trip down between the rocks and have a good look at it. And then I think we're going to head out to those two, um, two other stars further up the system. I actually don't know how far away they were, but we'll look at that in a second. <laughs> just look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I absolutely love it with like the planet kind of kind of hidden by the dust in the rings and you can just see out there on uh, on the left you can just see the uh, and the brown dwarf with his own ring structures and the colors are absolutely beautiful. You know what? I'm going to take a high resolution screenshot of this uh, and then I'm going to post it on Discord. If you want this as your desktop or something like I'll post it on uh, on the Discord to the gallery. You can go and you can pick it up from there if you want to. Also, we're getting really close now, but look at this. You can actually see the lensing effect of the stars roping, or the light roping around the neutron star here. So here we are. There's the neutron star and the slightly different colored star you can see right there in the middle. The yellowish one. The one that's big and not blue. That is the other star here in system. So not as close as I originally thought, but this could be a very good candidate. Or it could have been. I don't think necessarily this would be. But this could have been a very good candidate for what's called a Type 1A supernova. And I think this is why somebody suggested the system to me. Because I probably mentioned Type 1A supernova on a live stream at some point. So I would assume this is the neutron star. Yes. No, that's the... Oh, hold on. Is that heavier? 1.7? 1.3, yeah, it is. Okay, fair enough. So the F-type star is actually heavier than the neutron star in this case. Type 1A supernova is, is it actually more often occurs when you're looking at something like a um, um, like a white dwarf orbiting a other star. Uh, what happens is you have this white dwarf sitting there. It's pretty much exhausted the majority of its fuel, but it has another star in its vicinity, um, much like this, actually. And because if the neutron star would then slowly begin to to suck material off the other star, and material and plasma would fall onto the neutron star, making it slowly heavier and heavier and heavier, and as it gets heavier and heavier and the other star gets lighter and lighter, this process of course accelerates because well the gravity of the neutron star will or white dwarf should be white dwarfs, in this case neutron star, but normally white dwarf, would be bigger and bigger. The gravity would increase there, the mass of the other one would decrease, so it would have a harder and harder time holding on to the material. So you have this runaway process where more and more material will fall onto to a white dwarf. As the white dwarf gets more and more material onto it, it gets heavier, it gets denser, it gets hotter in the core, and eventually it gets so hot again that the fusion process is reignited. So it gets hot enough that that fusion can start. In a normal star, this is balanced bad. You have like a radiation pressure that pushes outwards and you have the gravity pulling inwards and you have gas pressure also pushing outwards and that kind of all balance each other out. But in this case, there it's already reached this critical temperature just by just like normally. And, and this is still an accelerating process. We still have more and more material falling onto the star. So you get this runaway fusion process that just goes faster and faster and faster and more and more material is, is converted. Eventually, it reaches some kind of limit, some kind of like mass limit, very well-defined mass limit. And when that happens, the whole thing goes nova. The interesting thing about Type 1A supernova is, one, they are extremely bright and they can outshine a galaxy completely. So this a Type 1A supernova can be brighter than all other stars in a galaxy combined. That means that they are easy to spot even in distant galaxies because when that thing goes off, it will be so bright that it just outshines everything else in the galaxy. Secondly, because it always happens at the exact same mass, um, that means that you will always get the exact same event. It will always be the same brightness. And therefore, type 1a supernova is what is called a standard candle. That means it is an, an event, an, an object that has a very, very well-defined luminosity. Like it's, it sends out a very well-defined amount of light. And that's important because imagine you're standing in, in a pitch black room and out somewhere in the distance, somebody turns on a, uh, a light. It can be difficult for you to see 
if that light is a faint light that is close to you or an extremely bright light that is very far away from you, if you have no reference at all. And that's the problem you have in astronomy. I mean, you just see a light. How do you determine how far away it is? That could be difficult. But if you know exactly how bright that light is, then you can, by estimating how much light you're receiving, you can then guesstimate exactly, not exactly, but you can make a pretty good guess on how far away that object is. So that has been a, a way to determine distances, distance, distances to galaxies. Problem is these kind of events are extremely rare, they don't happen that often, but yeah. But anyway, I think this must be why people posted this system for me. It was definitely a fun little visit uh, that I definitely enjoyed. If you know of a system where you have a white dwarf or neutron star that orbits each other even closer than this, what is the distance actually here? Let's just quickly check this. It's around 3000 light seconds. If you know of a system where they're even closer, I would love to see that. I would love to go and visit a system like that because that could be an amazing view, I think. So I post in the comment if you come across such a system. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's little excursion out to deep space. If you did, remember to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.